Hi, this is the Mighty Q-Dog, and we're at the Cowlitz Gamers for Kids, and the doctor is in. Bright and early on Saturday morning, I had to unload my car, set up my booth. Here's just kind of a walk around of the room before it, all the madness. It's hard to believe in just a few hours, hundreds of retro game enthusiasts are going to take over this room. We're going to help raise funds for the Children Justice and Advocacy Center, Kelso, Washington. One of my favorite parts of the day is this point, running around, looking for the few games I need to get one step closer to that complete NES collection. I was by myself for the first time and I wouldn't really be able to walk around much later so I was trying to get all my deals in now. Before the show started I worked out a few trades. My goal was to add at least five new titles to the NES library and boy did I score. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Palace Gamers for Kids. My name is Peter Flitch. I will be uh, <laughs> your DJ and MC for the day. Let's go right here. Thanks for having me. Give me a break. Um, thank you all very much for coming. I ended up getting up really early for this event. I was too excited to sleep. This is the third time I was going to the show, and I really enjoy seeing everyone. You start to see the same people at all these events. Chuck and Rick, some of the organizers for the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. You start to see the same vendors and the same group of YouTubers. A lot of the time, a group of us will meet up before the show or after, and we'll get some food and hang out and do a little trading on the side. Now, we always go out to these shows for great pickups and deals, but lately, for me, it's more about making friends and getting to spend time with people that share the same interests that I have. Plus, it doesn't hurt that usually you can get the hookup and work out some really great trades. During the expo, there's several events going on. One was a Super Mario Kart battle tournament and a Sonic the Hedgehog race tournament. Here are the trophies for the winners. There was a little something for everyone, and there was even a little cosplay at the show. There were so many more games this year. A lot more people came through the door, and definitely a lot of deals we had, and some really high level items. So look at all these awesome games that are here. Multiple copies of Mario RPG, Mega Man X, Mega Man X3, another Mega Man X. And now I'll show you what I managed to snag. Okay guys, here are my pickups. I think I did really well, especially for not being able to really leave my booth at all. Uh, a lot of people came up and traded with me, worked out some pretty amazing deals and some huge trades. I was able to complete a loose set. I got Super Mario 3, it's uh, Super Mario Advance 4, and Super Mario Advance 1 which has a compilation of like Mario 2 and I think the original Mario Bros and a couple other games. Really happy to get those. I got Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Has more of that uh, Mario RPG turn-based combat. I'm just now getting into the Mario and Luigi franchise and I'm really looking forward to playing some of the games. Now I can't believe I didn't have this but I picked up Bubble Bobble for the Game Boy. Um, Bubble Bobble is one of my favorite games of all time and I'm really looking forward to playing this and DMG 118 China. Someone sold me a uh, Chinese bubble bobble apparently. 
So I'll have to get the English version. Not that there's a lot of writing. It's kind of cool having a different region game. Game Boy's region free up to the 3DS. So we'll have to check that out. Continuing on with the handhelds, I worked out a really awesome trade with uh, my pal Jesse. He works with the Northwest Classic Gamer Enthusiast Group. Um, I ended up training him a whole handful of complete in box uh, Japanese shmups like Earth Defense Force, and I think there's Gradius and some really solid titles. Um, he ended up giving me a complete homie hookup. I got my first Dreamcast game ever. The Marvel vs. Capcom 2. He also traded me Kirby's Mass Attack. Um, just one step closer to getting that complete Kirby collection. I think there's about three titles I need. Most of them are the DS games. And lastly, I got a copy of Super Princess Peach. Uh, this kind of went under the radar. Um, I don't want to say it was a short print, but most people didn't pick this up when it came out. It's a pretty solid platformer, and I'm looking forward to playing this. This is going to be the next handheld game I take with me and play on the go. Now, I keep a lot of my collection pretty tight. Um, I really keep only the really great titles, I feel, or things that have replayability. Something that I'd sit down and want to play with a friend or lend to someone. And I picked up Cube Ninja. I've got a lot of people recommending this to me. It's a, like a puzzle, little platforming elements. We'll have to see how good it is, Let's see if it stays in the library. Also, I was really happy to get uh, Crush 3D. Now, this isn't super rare, but it's getting overlooked quite a bit. It's a GameStop exclusive. Um, There's a shorter run, came out a couple years ago, and they're actually getting harder and harder to find. And speaking of hard and harder to find games, I got a copy of Cave Story 3D. I'm so grateful to have a copy. I've had this on Steam. It's only a couple bucks, but having the physical 3DS game is really awesome. I want to say this was a order direct from NIMS only. It's a short print, and it's some consider the rarest 3DS game. It still commands about $30 to $50 complete. Um, so if you see it in the wild, go ahead and grab that. I'm going to have to make a case, it's going to live on my shelf. Looking forward to playing this on the go. Now I worked out a trade with Tyler and Terry. I was wrapping up at the end of the show and Tyler ran over and he saw I still had one top loader left and he really wanted it and we worked out a deal. Um, I ended up picking up about 10 or so games from them and I got a good stack of NES collection games. Most people don't know is I'm trying to go for a loose complete collection. Um, I'm almost there, but this is going to put me at, I think, 432 through 448. And one of the big massive trades I ended up doing, I finally completed my Mega Man set. Got Mega Man 5 here, um, clean label. Good back. I don't know what I did with my copy as a kid, and I'm glad to have this again. Now, part of that mega trade with the uh, Mega Man 5, I ended up picking up a copy of Final Fantasy 3 for the Super Nintendo. Never had it, this game. I've uh, been wanting to play it for quite a while, and it's definitely one I'm going to hold on to. Got a copy of Mega Man X. Now, I never played this as a kid. My cousin had it, and he really liked it, and I know a lot of you out there really like this Mega Man too. Um, I pretty much stuck to just the NES Mega Mans, but everyone's been telling me I need to play this, and it was part of that Mega Trade also. Now the last game that Mega Trade I picked up was uh, Banjo-Tooie, and it's the not for resale version. I still need to get a copy of Banjo-Tooie, just the regular version, but I enjoy having the not for resales. I have this and the golden eye, which is really hard to get next to the Majora's Mask. Uh, fairly clean label, minor damage. I might put this up for trade later, but I'm really happy to have another not for resale game in my collection. The last NES game we got is Calitz Gamers for Kids 2011. This is the Tetris version that they had. Only 30 copies. 
I believe they did a Tetris, a original Mario Bros, and a Rad Racer. Uh, Thor came out and he was signing stuff and it was really cool to have him there. I have number 7 of 30. Uh, I saw this at John Hancock's house. He has the first one and it signed a Thor of 30. And I'm trying to go and complete a lot of the show sets and I'm really glad to get this. I won this in the silent auction. Uh, I donated $40 for it and it's gonna go along pretty good with all the other Tetris exclusives and memorabilia. Next, I got a pair of AV cables. Actually needed these. We busted out the Sega Genesis and I didn't have the cables. And actually finding an original set of Model 2 Genesis cables is getting harder and harder to get. Uh, Chuck gave me a really great deal on this. Um, so I'm looking forward to playing some Sega titles in the near future. This is amazing. I secured a copy of Spot Goes to Hollywood. There was only 35 made and it is a undumped, unreleased prototype for the 32X. Um, the Genesis, and I think there's a Super Nintendo version that came out. The game's a little bit different. It plays slightly different. Um, some of the elements are also different in level design. Um, so I'm happy I got this. Some of the exclusives go up in price. Last year's uh, promotional game was an NES cart, and I think it went for about 70 over what they're asking for. Um, that was just a few months ago. So that was really cool. And I got an extra one for trade. I took one in in trade for some of my product. If you ended up getting a copy of the game, consider yourself pretty lucky. All 35 copies sold out. And I got number four of 35, really low number. I'm happy with it. Now I've been looking for a copy of this for quite some time. I ended up getting it at the NA booth. They're doing 50% off at the very end and say a copy of the Pac-Man board game. I'm gonna end up taking this down to the beach house and forcing my family to play some Pac-Man board game with me. Now my big item was right when the show opened. I kind of had a deal worked out um, for a lot of my product and I ended up getting another copy of the Pikachu 3D XL and I'm really happy with it. Terry was wanting it quite a bit and not sure if we're gonna work something out or not. He keeps texting me. But the original plan is I am going to take this and the original plan, I don't know if it still is, but this is gonna be one of the prizes for my next sus subscriber contest. Well guys, I am getting a ton of pickups. I had a really great time. A lot of you came out, said hi, worked out a lot of trades. I had such a good time raised over $8,000 for charity. I think it was the largest Callets Gamers for Kids yet. And I'm definitely looking forward to attending next year. And if you're in the area next year, you should definitely too. As always, I'm Dr. Nintendo. Thanks for watching. Oh, I didn't get any of it. Oh, come on, man. All right, so we're killing me.